and welcome to the Full Weight of Joy podcast, the podcast for women who are done stressing about the weight of the world, of expectations, and settling for status quo, and ready to step into the full weight of joy. Joy in the journey, whether up or down, joy through the life's challenges, and joy in loving your life right where you are, even though sometimes we feel like chucking it all and moving to Bali. It's for women who are ready to step into who God called them to be. He chose you to be in this world. He created you for a specific purpose. God called us to be the light on a hill, and by embracing who you are and whose you are, you can stand on that hill and shine. The best part, when you're standing next to another woman who's also on the journey, the world gets brighter. My name is Tammy. I'm your host and a master certified life coach and a trained therapist. For over a decade, I've been helping women do just that. Step into who they're called to be and shine. Are you ready, friend, to start your journey? Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Tammy, and today I wanted to talk to you about guilt. I wanted to talk to you about how feeling, having the heaviness of guilt on our lives is destroying our energy, is destroying this, well, is destroying our being, it's destroying what we have, the, the good things that are in our lives. And I wanted to talk about five ways that guilt is destroying our energy. And one of the reasons why is I'm starting to see a trend right now I've, uh, from my friends, from myself, from my clients is that just there's things that we could have done different. There's things that uh, were avoidable mistakes or there's things that we wish we would have handled differently that we didn't. And one of the things that I, well, first, we can't change the past. What we can do is change how we see the past. We can change the the our understanding and we can give ourselves some compassion for how we handled it because you were doing the best you could with the information, with the resources, with the talents, with the strengths, with the the knowledge that you had, with the, with the abilities you had, you did the best you could. Right or wrong, that decision is no longer should not, should not hold on to you anymore. Like it should not be the, I made the wrong decision. The truth is you made the decision. And so that is no longer a, well, now that we know better, we can do better. One of the things that we can do is we can give ourselves self-compassion. But I really want to talk about was five ways that guilt is destroying our energy. And one is like the mental and emotional drain. It consumes us. It has self criticism. It has rumination. It paralyzes us. It's it's typically over our past actions or perceived failures. Again, we did the best we can. Could you? What would happen if you just give yourself grace for the the choices, the decisions you made before, the circumstances? The I guarantee that you did not have complete control over the the circumstances that you made the decision for. So you did the best you can. And this ongoing mental struggle can lead to exhaustion, making it hard to focus. It it takes the joy of the moment away. There's also another way that guilt destroys our energy is increased stress and anxiety. When we hold stress and anxiety, our hormone levels are increasing, our cortisol. I Right now, I'm looking at ways to do, like, it's like yoga that releases cortisol in your body. Because I've realized the stress and anxiety from being in grief for such a long time has weighed on my body. It is, and not only that, it's just the the parenting and the weight of the the world and just so much weight that we have to go through, that stress and anxiety and these these circumstances. And so this persistent stress, it, it reduces your vitality. It starts to, it hurts your body. This, I mean, belly fat, their headaches. My whole, like about a year ago is when I had this whole eye thing where my, I lost, I got, I got fluid in my retinas and I lost my ability to focus. I had no focal point. And so the headaches that came from that, and I was exhausted by 1 PM, I needed to lay with uh, in darkness just to give my brain a break from trying to figure out and see the world. This And it was caused by stress and anxiety. So when we hold guilt, it is, it's 
piling on the stress and anxiety. Distraction from priorities. Ladies, guilt gives you an out from doing what's important to you. It gives you that excuse of that of not moving forward, of not taking action. It can lead to like it's inefficient. So when we fixate on guilt, when we focus on guilt and what we've done wrong, then it distracts us from the things that we're doing right or our goals or our priorities, our values, our uh, vision, our future that we're creating from our purpose. It distracts us from our purpose and who we are in Christ instead of we're focusing on who we are in this world. It inhibits our joy and fulfillment. Joy and fulfillment are our ultimate goals, right? We want the joy in the moment and this this guilt overshadows it. Every positive experience is dulled when we when we have guilt in our lives because it's it those lies of you don't deserve this. It's not this is just an accident or you, you know, enjoy it now because you're gonna make a bad decision later, or you don't, you know, karma is going to come back to get you. It's It overshadows our positive experiences now, making it difficult to fully enjoy or appreciate the successes that we have or the moments of joy that we are experiencing now or in the future. Guilt is stealing our joy from the future. It's pulling us back to a circumstance that we no longer can control. If you do need to go and apologize for something, then then pray about that. But what I'm talking about is this guilt, this unnecessary guilt that we hold, even though we may have forgiveness, even though we may know logically that we had, we did the best we could, but we're we're choosing this guilt because we're afraid of releasing it and what becomes possible when we do. The erosion of self-worth. When you hold guilt in your heart. And it it makes it, we like, when we have the guilt, we feel like we have to earn to be out of it. We have to work our way out of guilt. And so this is the erosion of the self-worth because we are valuable because of who God created us to be, not because of the things we do. There's, we do have good works, right? We do, faith comes with good works or, you know, without good works, faith is meaningless or whatever that whatever that is, but you get the point. It's this erosion of self-worth, this chronic guilt undermines your self-esteem, your self-worth, your value that God has placed on your heart, on your being, on your purpose. And this low self-esteem, it saps motivation, energy as we're talking about, and it makes it makes you feel like you're not deserving of success or happiness, or it's making it harder to pursue those goals, that God's eyes dream, that vision that of having the life that you really want. Oh man, if I could just just tell you, look at like look at your look in your eyes right now and tell you that the guilt that you're feeling, God's already released you from. He's already forgiven you. So set it down. Here's three ways we can dec- decrease our guilt right now. Three things that you can do right now and that this is a these are our practices. These are ongoing. These are things that, because we always have this guilt that that seeps in. I mean, talking about mom guilt, we had every every corner, every day, there's some mom guilt that I feel. And then I have to remind myself of these things. This one is practice self-compassion. Acknowledge that we all make mistakes. It's part of being human. Remember, we're a human being, not a human doing. So the being of us, if we're not centered in who we are being, we're going to do things that don't align with it. Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding you would offer your best friend. Remember I talked about if you wouldn't say it to your best friend, don't say it to yourself. Have that compassion and think about it. When you start thinking of this guilt that you're holding and you're asking why, what would you tell your friend if she was experiencing the same thing? What would you tell me if I was experiencing the same thing? So this is through our self-talk. Replace negative self-talk with encouraging, supportive language. Like talk about I like I I did the best with what I had, and I know I can do better. I should have done better. Leads to you know next time I have the opportunity, I'm going to do something different. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. The truth is you didn't release that and focus on what you can change, where you can grow, what you can adapt, where you can be compassionate. 
And then there's the mindfulness piece of really just sitting and, and praying and bring yourself to this present moment. Stop ruminating on things that happened in the past that you can't change, you can't affect anymore, and then focus on the things in the present and in the future that you can. So this is where you practice self-compassion and grace. Seek pers- perspective and forgiveness. So talk to somebody about it, a mentor, a coach, a pastor, a trusted friend, not just someone who will listen, but will listen with a ears of compassion and someone who can offer you a more objective view, show you how you made that choice because it was the best one at the time, because it's the, the, the circumstances that you had, you were, you were in a no win situation and you made the best of it. But share your feelings with someone, talk about it, and ask for their perspective. Ask someone who's willing to be honest with you in a positive way. Ask for a different angle and and reduce the intensity that you're feeling. Because when we get things out, not only when we are talking to our friend about it, but when we say it out loud, we can start to see the truth. When things come to life, they lose their power over you. Admit this guilt that you're holding so someone can help you see that it's not your guilt to carry. It's not your responsibility to hold on to that. And it's not doing you any good by holding on to that. So ask yourself, even if, like, even if you need to write yourself a letter of asking for forgiveness, pray and then realize that God's already forgiven you for it. And then commit to moving forward, committing to when, when you're feeling the guilt of this. This is what you're going to tell yourself instead. This is what you're going to do to show yourself that you've you've overcome that already. And the next thing is take positive action. Action wins all the time. Transfer your transform your feelings of guilt into positive actions. Identify steps you can take to get out of the guilt, to improve yourself, to if it's something you needed to learn, a if it's you needed to offer more grace. Learn. This is where I love the Enneagram. Learn about how other people see the world and see what their core fears are and how they responded out of their core fears. And it had nothing to do in the first place. So make amends with yourself. If it was somebody else at this point, go and, and ask for forgiveness. Or if you, if it's not something that you need forgiven from them, it's okay to just reach out and, or just ask yourself for forgiveness and ask God to release you from it. And then set small goals. I talked last, um, last podcast or a few podcasts ago about stop being so hard on ourselves, how take a mountain and break them down. So establish small achievable goals that you can start to help you learn from a situation. What did you want to take? What are the gifts, the things that you want to take from that situation before? And where can I put it? How can I shift? How can I grow from it? And what can I do differently in the future? Whether it's how I treat somebody. If I, like, I, there's times that I'm like, I really wish I didn't say that to my kids. And so then I put into place something, how I, what I want to say, how I want to react. One of the things is when my kids are really little and they're like, mommy, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, what? I hated that. I hated responding. I don't like when it's like, hey, what? Like, it's just, it cuts off and it, it, there's no love. There's no compassion there. So one of the things that I, because I didn't like that, I didn't like responding to them that way. And I didn't want them to learn to respond in that way, which I've learned that's a normal response. However, I wanted to do better. And so one of the things that I started doing is I would say, yes, love. And that's something it's so natural now. And my kids are like, hey, mom, I was like, yes, love. And it comes from a place of it reminds me one that I love them. Doesn't matter how frustrating they are. I still I love them so much. But it gives that positive like, yes, what can I do for you instead of what? And even when I'm stressed, when I say yes, love, it it does something. If I'm distracted, yes, love, like it points your energy in that direction. So that's one area where like I was feeling guilty about the way that I was talking to them. And so years ago, this is a practice I put into place and I feel so good with it. And I'm so good now. It's so natural 
now that, but you can't, I can't say yes, love in a, like in a mean way. I can't really yes, love like, no, it, it, it gives me that moment to get my heart right, to respond to them, to, to speak to them kindly and lovingly. And I get to tell them that I love them, that how I feel about them every time they, they approach me. And so think about the part that guilt is playing in your life. It's time to release that. Our bodies hold on to our emotions until we release them, until we work through them. It holds on and it does some terrible things. Stress is not supposed to be long-term in the body. It's supposed to get us out of that fight or flight and it's supposed to be gone. And we, we in this world, we've piled on stress and anxiety and overwhelm and guilt and shame. And it's not doing us any favors. So what do you want instead? Release yourself from the responsibility of carrying that guilt and really step into how can you release and how can you live a life of joy? How can you experience the full weight of joy? And how can you move forward in your purpose, in your life, in your grace and compassion by releasing the guilt? How can you have more energy if you get rid of the guilt that you're carrying? How can you be more alive? How can you have more joy if you remove the guilt that was not yours to carry in the first place? So with that, friend, if you've got some guilt that you want to release and you really want to step into who God called you to be, get on my calendar and let's talk. Let's talk about what's possible and let's see what what possibilities are and what hope you have in your life. And let's see the lies, like bring it to like bring it out to see what lies you've been carrying and release those for truth. All right, so get on my calendar in the show notes. There's a link, get there. That's my gift to you. I, I truly mean, it's not just say, you know, like, hey, let me know if there's anything I can do. No, this is something that you can do and I can do and we can do it together. So get on my calendar. Let's talk. All right, with that friend, choose joy until joy chooses you. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.